Hi, my name is Natalie, and this is Natalie Lawyer Chick. I'll be discussing popular topics through a legal lens. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Hey YouTube, my name is Natalie. Welcome to my channel. I'm a criminal defense attorney, and today we are going to be reacting to North Platte Police Department conspiring with a judge to deprive me of my rights. I've done a little bit of research here, so this won't be one of my normal reaction videos. And it's only two minutes long, but it has a wealth of information about sovereign citizens who believe that they have a right to travel that exempts them from having to have a uh, driver's license in order to operate a motor vehicle. Okay, now this North Platte Police Department is located in North Platte, North Carolina. I mean, cops just stop me. Okay, so this is the paper that he's going to turn over to the police that just stopped him. I would like to say I'll give him some points for stopping in a timely fashion after being uh, alerted that the police were making a traffic stop on him. That's always good. And he's going to hand the officer this piece of paper uh, to show why he should be able to drive without a license. I want you to notice a couple of things about it. Notice, notice, because it says notice on top. First, I want you to pay attention to the fact that this uh, paper is not signed. So um, I'm gonna take the closed captions off just so you can see it. So it's a piece of paper that has been typewritten. It has no uh, letterhead to it, no seal, no force of law. And it also is just a piece of paper with no signature to it. So I think that's very interesting. It has a signature line, but it hasn't been signed. That's a kind of a stylistic issue more than anything, but I think it just shows that this is not a valid piece of paperwork. Uh, next, the very, the very first line starts with, this automobile is not used for commercial purposes. Now, if you see here, the very first line um, and the very first word has an incorrect grammatical error. Um, there's no capitalization on the T. And then um, it says I, and then there's a semicolon there. Um, I don't know if that punctuation was supposed to go before or after the I. I'm going to assume before, and that should likely have uh, been a period instead of a semicolon. I man, and neither I nor man is capitalized, depending on which one is supposed to start this sentence. Declare my automobile a household article slash private property with no period to end that sentence. And then he has a citation. The right of the citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property thereon, either by horse-drawn carriage or by automobile, is not a mere privilege, which a city can prohibit or permit at will, but a common right which he has under the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thompson v. State 154 SE. Now, Another stylistic issue that we have here is when you have any type of legal documents, you don't use red ink or red print because it does not have the force of law. You can have red line paper where there's lines on either side that are red, but the actual words themselves have to be black. And then um, a signature is usually in blue or black ink, depending on the court that you're in. Now, as far as the citation here, Thompson v. Smith, so those numbers and letters that come after a case site, so you know that this is a case, meaning a court has made the decision uh, and, and the court has written these words, some judges or judge. 154 SE is supposed to be telling you the volume, which is uh, the number before the two letters. The SE is the type of book that it is, so it's the 154th of SE, and then the number after that, which is supposed to be there, should be the page, and the page number is missing. So it took me some while to look this case up. 154 SE 579, it is a 1930s case out of the state of Virginia, so it's a Virginia Supreme Court case, and that case had a set of facts in which um, there was a man that was driving around um, on a permit to drive. Back then they called it a permit, not a license. And the legislature had certain things that could happen that could suspend your license or take away your license uh, to drive. This person's license or privilege to drive was suspended under two prongs. First was the 
ways that are set out by the legislature by which your license can be suspended. And then the second one was that the sheriff was given the authority, the sheriff was giving the authority to suspend people's licenses or revoke their licenses if he didn't think that they should be able to drive. And the court found that the legislature, it has the authority to write a law to, you know, take away someone's right to drive. But that that power and authority did not rest with the sheriff to be able to do in and of his own accord, okay? So that's what that case is about. So when this court was saying that the right of a citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property thereon, either by horse-drawn carriage or by automobile, is not a mere privilege, which a city can prohibit or permit at will, but a common right, which he has under the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the court was talking about the city as in the city sheriff. They were not talking about the legislature, which they found did have the right to take away someone's right to drive as long as they had written a law that said that they had the right to do that. So if you have any question about whether or not um, that uh, my interpretation of what that says is correct, there's actually a case um, called Max Field v. Corwin. So that case found that Thompson v. Smith does not apply to sovereign citizen art arguments. It's a 1987 case, and this was a person that uh, had their license revoked and their right to drive suspended, and they also had some driving under the influence issues, right? And they found that someone was who was advancing the same exact sort of sovereign citizen arguments could not use the case of Thompson v. Smith in order to argue that they did not need to have a license. So I'll read to you exactly what they said. Plaintiff argues that the right to travel is an inherited and an alienable right which the government was instituted to protect. Plaintiff cites Thompson v. Smith, 154 SE 579, 1930, for the broad proposition that the right of the citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property thereon, either by horse-drawn carriage or by automobile, is not a mere privilege which a city may prohibit at will, but a common right which he has under the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Plaintiff's reliance on this state court case is misplaced as a matter of law and logic. And they pointed to the fact that it's a state court case because that plaintiff was trying to use a Virginia case in a Michigan court, which it, you know, would, would not apply. You can't use a state court case. It's not a federal case. You can't use a state court case in a federal or another state court case in order to say that it's binding or controlling on the court. You can't do that. And so um, just like this person who's in North Carolina cannot use Thompson v. Smith for that uh, proposition. But the uh, Maxfield court goes on to say, Thompson involved a challenge to a city ordinance which authorized and directed the chief of police to revoke the permit of any driver who, in his opinion, becomes unfit to drive an automobile on the streets of the city. The ordinance further provided that the holder of the permit could apply to the judge or the municipal court to have it reinstated. Ironically, the state court held that those provisions of the ordinance, which specifically provided that the conviction of a felony or a violation of the prohibition of law in and of themselves operated to revoke a driving permit for a period of 12 months, passed constitutional muster, which meant that the law was legal. That part of the law anyway. But the court found that the other provisions were to re were overbroad insofar as the policy of the law and the legal principles, which are to control the action of the chief of police, are not determined or determinable from the terms of the ordinance. The court found the unfettered discretion vested in the chief of police rendered the ordinance void because it unlawfully delegated legislative powers to an administrative officer. And then they say one more thing here about the exact right to travel issue that this guy is trying to argue that I think it greatly exemplifies why that case of Thompson v. Smith is misplaced and him relying on it. The second prong of plaintiff's argument is that a natural person cannot be compelled to waive a right. To begin with, plaintiff confuses the constitutional right to travel itself not an absolute right with the qualified privilege to drive an automobile. Just as the right to free speech is not absolute and does not include the right to yell fire in a crowded theater, the right to travel does not include the right to drive a motor vehicle on the public highways without a driver's license. 
the court would have thought that plaintiff had learned that rule from a teacher of basic civics rather than having to hear it from a federal district court judge. So very clear here in this case that Thompson v. Smith is not good law for the proposition that you have the right to travel, therefore the right to operate a motor vehicle without a license. Not only was Thompson v. Smith um, uh, basically overruled for the proposition that you don't need a license uh, to operate a motor vehicle in a Michigan federal court, it was also overruled for that proposition in a Virginia court. So there's a, there's a case called Story v. Commonwealth, 9SE2D344, Virginia case, which holds that the um, Thompson v. Smith case is only applicable to cases in which someone outside of the authority of those vested in creating laws for the Motor Vehicle Administration is suspending someone's license and, or, or suspending someone's privilege. And it has nothing to do with anything else but that. So the next thing that we're gonna look at here in breaking down this piece of paper, because that's all it is, it's just a piece of paper, is Title 18 USC 31, which gives the definition of motor vehicle. And I looked it up and this definition is correct. Motor vehicle means every description or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways in the transportation of passengers or passengers in property. Used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fair fee, rate, charge, or other considerations, or directly or indirectly in connection with any business or other undertaking intended for profit. However, Title 18 USC 31 is a part of the federal code, the United States Code, for federal criminal offenses. This case is not a federal criminal offense. So therefore, for any motor vehicle crime to be a federal crime, it had to have been someone operating a motor vehicle in a commercial capacity. However, when it comes to operating a motor vehicle in a private capacity, that is within the jurisdiction of the state criminal courts. So let's look to North Carolina's definition. So in, in the state of North Carolina, which is the jurisdiction for this traffic stop, they have in their own motor vehicle code, um, North Carolina Motor Vehicle Code 20-286, definitions and then if you go down to number 10 motor vehicle a motor vehicle is any motor propelled vehicle trailer semi-trailer required to be registered under the laws of the state so that commercial qualification is not there because under state law there is no requirement that it be a commercial vehicle in order for it to be a crime to operate it without a license so again this paper that he's presenting to the police officer has no force of law because number one Thompson v Smith does not apply to the right to drive a motor vehicle and the obligation of states to issue driver's license to motorists and number two, Title 18 USC 31 does not apply to state traffic court. It only applies to federal traffic court, which he's not in. Hi, what's your name? Officer Allison. What's your first name? All right, I'm exercising my constitutional rights under the Fourth Amendment. I do not, I have the right to be secure of my person houses papers. In fact, this is name? private property, sir. What is your name? You can call me Mr. King. Why? Why do you need my name? Did, have I committed a crime? Why did you need his name? And yes, yes, you have committed a crime. Because you're driving without a license. You're driving with a license. I, this, isn't, this is private property, sir. No, it's not. Okay, well, you can call it what you want. Okay. If you want to violate, if you want to, let me talk, let me talk. If you want to violate my rights, I believe there's a warrant for you also. Okay. Okay, step out of the vehicle, please. I'm under arrest. There's a warrant for you. Are you Devontae? I'm Devontae King. So he already has a warrant for his arrest and he's driving without a license. Not a good look. So he stopped me. I'm in my private property. He's calling me the vehicle. Remember that. 
He oh, and he has no license plates, and he has a private property placard in the windshield of his vehicle. I mean, I don't understand what he thinks that's going to do. Again, your vehicle is your private property, but in order to operate your vehicle on the roads, on the public roads, you have to have a license in order to do that. You can walk around all you want, but once you get into the uh, in motor vehicle, you need to have a license in order to do that, and failure to do so will re result in your state in revocation of your privilege to drive. <laughs> That's fine, bro. You or the police department is never going to make me register my car. I dare you take okay. it. I dare you take it. Okay, well, I'll do it okay. every time. All right. I, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to file a lawsuit, so get ready. Oh, I'll let you. Here's the thing I don't get. You don't believe in the government, but the government is the one where the, that has the jurisdiction to... Um, the government is where you file your lawsuit. You do it down at the courthouse, you know, or or a county building or whatever, however your uh, local government does it. But a lawsuit is a function of the government, right? It's a civil process of the government in order to uh, seek redress for your grievances. So you're going to use the government in order to sue the police, but you don't accept the authority of the government in order for you to license, get a license and register your vehicle. It makes no sense. Don't worry, don't trip. I don't have a problem. Don't trip. No one's tripping but you. I'm not scared of you. Are you crazy? Don't trip. I saw his little fuzzy slippers. They look really comfortable. <laughs> Press by this officer. Let me call my girl. Text my girlfriend. Tell her real quick. Me. Cop just stopped me. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So he's got a few more videos of himself being arrested. He is, um, he doesn't seem to care that he get, he gets arrested. He doesn't seem to care that his, uh, you know, vehicle can be towed and all types of things because he's going to sue people and you know, it's just it's clear that um, people that have the sovereign citizen mindset are impervious to logic. There's no sense debating with them, as I did. I debated with them. I'll put that video up in the cards. Um, it just doesn't even make any sense to waste your time doing that. But um, it is very, very clear here from the law that I have showed you that the courts do not accept these arguments, right? The courts do not accept these arguments that you do not have to have a driver's license because you have the right to travel. It's not true. That's not what reality is. And I'll just, you know, there's there's nothing else to say there. I mean, I think that Max uh, Field v. Corwin case really laid it out. You know, you should have learned this in civics class, okay? If you want to operate a motor vehicle, you have to have a license. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!